Hey there guys, Reckon here, and welcome back to Let's Read Kata Shoujo. Don't know why that was paused. Probably like because I paused it. That would make sense. In the last episode, I don't remember what we did. Because it was like a week ago. But that's beside the point. Alright. Gonna have to edit that out. Fantastic. Just fantastic. Um, yeah, but... Real quick, I've had a, you know what, I'm not even going to make that joke. I'm not even going to make that joke. It's too late now. I've already been interrupted by Storm, so no, it's not going to happen. Anyway, we have all our Hanukkah points, so of course that would make us go toward Hanukkah and Lily, but we're trying to go for Rin, so we have to say no to that and do that. Why am I being dragged into this again? I've done more than enough, I think. If you're angry with Lily, that has nothing to do with me. Now wait just a second. Are you implying the president is more right in scolding me than yourself? Ah, damn. I think I could have worded that better. No, I don't, I don't know about that, but... I mean... What are you saying, He-Chan? It's just that I hardly think it's fair you can say that, seeing that I've helped you guys. The mood has changed. This is like a showdown between two gunfighters now. Well, it was like that before, too, but this time she's in his focus is on me. And so is Lily's, though she keeps quiet. I'm afraid I inadvertently pissed her off. Are you saying I'm wrong? What a dangerous situation. It's too early to argue with you. Yes, I think it's unfair of you to get on my case. Heechan, you want too much, but you have a point. Okay, okay, okay. You're not lazy, Heechan. Ha ha ha! Shizune pushes her glasses up with a thumb, almost approvingly. That's good. If you're not useless, you shouldn't let anyone say you are. The next time I say it, it'll really be because you're disappointing me like Miss Class up here, so don't let this go to your head. Lily takes the jab silently, a venomous visage frozen on her face. Class Rep, Chi chan says, don't forget that report, please. I won't. Would that be all? Yep. Then good day to you all. Her voice would cut the air of the classroom in half, if it was more, more tangible. Lily leaves the room, understandably in a bad mood, but still managing to be as poised and calm as usual. Chizuna, you really did go a little too far today. It's true, Shichan, just a little. If I'd been expecting Shizuna to grudgingly admit, I have a point there as well. I think I was expecting too much. She doesn't respond. Ah, Shichan thinks you should mind your own business. Shichan, we have a few last-minute things to take care of before class. Might be late, so can you please cover for us? Yeah. Perfect, yay, okay, thanks, you chan They walk outside, even though there are only ten minutes left before the bell will ring, signaling the start of class. Hanako doesn't come to the morning class at all, leaving her seat looking empty and lonely in the back of the classroom. I have to tell her that Lily was looking for her if I see her later. After the events of this morning, class is pretty boring in comparison. I turn the pages of my textbook lazily. We've been covering the same amount of pages each day, so reading ahead is more or less giving myself a preview of what tomorrow's lesson will be about. The clock at the front of the room sounds unbearably loud. The teacher hasn't said anything in over seven minutes, instead opting to cover the board in rows and rows of equations taken directly from the book. The rhythmic clashing of chalk on blackboard seems to synchronize perfectly with the ticking of the clock. I start to copy down the equation just to pass the time, not noticing Misha's head poking over my shoulder until she's almost on top of me. What are you doing? I try to strike a balance between being quiet enough to not draw attention to myself and loud enough to draw hers. What are you doing, he chan Panic shoots me as Misha starts talking at her normal volume and I sputter out a hasty reply, still keeping my voice down despite the fact she just blew any hope of being discreet I may have had. I'm copying down that stuff. What are you doing? Why so loud? Aw, uh, really? But it's all in the book. That's why no one else is copying it down. I know. Why are you so loud? Why are you so quiet, he chant? It's hard to hear you. I look around to see if anyone is noticing our conversation. It's pretty, o pretty obvious that everyone has, even the teacher. She's in a smile as coyly, and I start to wonder if Misha's doing this because she told her to. Is this because of what happened between her and Lily earlier? This is what I get for trying to be reasonable, for trying to take the middle path? Shizune is way too prideful, although by now I should expect that kind of behavior from her. Why are you doing this? Huh? Misha is totally oblivious to the awkward stare the teacher is giving both of us, 
while trying to balance her textbook on one finger. For a brief second, it looks as if things could get ugly, but the teacher simply looks away, as if it's not worth the trouble. I guess this is a good thing, and I slump back in my seat in relief. The rest of the day pauses by an event... passes... pauses... passes by uneventfully, and this time I'm able to appreciate that it does. But the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry, so I stay for a while, reviewing what we'll be covering class today. I prefer to leave last anyway, so I don't have to deal with crowding in the hallways. I notice Shizune and Mishi have also stayed behind, talking to someone from another class. Shizune is signaling so fast that her hands make noises like swords cutting through the air. Mishi is trying desperately to keep up, but it's clear she can barely manage to even understand her. I put my head down. Whatever they're discussing, it looks like serious business, probably way over my head. Not just that, but Shizune also seems angry, although it could just be her normal severity making it appear so. Shizune signs to the point where her wrist, wrists crackle and Misha struggles to spit it out in word form. Sometimes she trips over herself like she's dealing with tongue twisters, and then on top of that she has to sign back anything the other girl says. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired like she's about to faint. Luckily for her, their business is soon finished and the girls sit down in their seats again. Wah! I'm so tired! She's hanging her head limply on her desk, looking exhausted. Festival preparations must be tough for you. Indeed, the people in this school seem to be taking the festival very seriously. Whenever I see people idling about before and after classes, they're always talking about their plans for it. It's kind of neat to see everyone being so enthusiastic about it. I'm probably the only one who doesn't have something to do. Shizune starts signing at me and Misha perks up, looking at her hands with slightly unfocused eyes. She signs with harsh, heavy, dramatic strokes. Misha translates her signing into speech for me. She does it so well, it's like Shizune is actually speaking, transmitting her thoughts directly through Misha. Well, we're in the student council, you know, so we're pretty busy. Sarcasm? Huh? The tone of Shizune's actions make me think she's speaking with disdain. Misha interprets it normally, replacing whatever her intent may have been there with her own chip or twist on things. It's still disorienting, and I don't think I'll ever get used to it. Never mind. How could I forget with you two trying to get me jo to join at least twice a day? Ah, but he Jen. Some could say work, the work is too much. It'd be nice if students were to show a little more support for their leadership. Some appreciate the appreciation of the ones who are trying so hard to make it all possible. Maybe, for example, a little help. That's asking too much, is it? Yep, help would be appreciated from students like you. If students would show their dedication and school spirit and offer some help, well, I don't exactly need it. But I wouldn't necessarily refuse it, so it would be nice if someone would... Oh, hello! I look over my shoulder and see Hanako peering timidly into the classroom, most of her body hidden behind the door. Hey, playing delinquent again? Hanako blushes hard at Misha, Misha's straightforward jab, even if it was only in jest. Shizune stares at her probingly, causing Hanako to look down and start backing away to the point where only her fingers can be si seen wrapped nervously around the edge of the door. Maybe she's shown her dislike of Hanako by her association for her dislike of Lily. It appears so, and Hanako probably knows it as well. They seem to have momentarily forgotten about trying to get me to stay for the rest of the day. What is it, Hanako? Uh, has Lily been here? Sorry, Sato's not here. She uh, came by in the morning, though. Hanako keeps looking uneasily at Shizune, who stares back at her with a usual studying gaze. What is she trying to do? Of course, Shizune isn't going to look away, and she is intimidating enough as it is, so I can only imagine how terrified Hanako would be. It is a little funny, though, watching Hanako's reaction to Shizune's normal behavior. This is what happens when two people of two different extremes meet, it seems. Do, do you know where she is? If she has any sense in her head, she's in her classroom working on the festival project. But who knows what that woman is lo where that lo woman is loitering at? She might be slacking off somewhere, just like Ichan. Wah! Damn, what is it where she's in her need to point out stuff like this? Hanako nods quickly and retreats with haste. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, we're working really hard to make the festival happen, and driving other people insane along the way. Well, good luck with that. I stand up to leave, making my eggs before either of them manage to berate me for any more for slacking off. The halls are somewhat quiet, as expected. Everyone must be in club meetings or festival preparations. Or both. Shizune's words about being a slacker echo in my head. I feel a bit guilty about not contributing, but I seem to, but I seem to lack the resolve to do something concrete about the matter. For the festival, it's too late already unless I count helping Shizune and Misha, which I naturally don't, and clubs... 
I don't know. Maybe I'm not a club type of person. Halfway through the way from the school building to the dorms, I spot a figure in front of the dorms. It's friend. It looks like she's working on her mural today, too. I walk over to her, but she doesn't seem to notice me approaching. She's sitting on an upturned box, looking intently at the wall she's painting with a brush held between her toes. The mural has progressed considerably since yesterday, but it's still only half done as far as I can tell. More colors have appeared, and the twisted human-like features have figures have spread and increased in number. I have to say, the style is quite eye-catching and very unique. Not that I would be knowledgeable about art by any measurable scale, but it's very nice looking nevertheless. I clear my throat to get her attention, but not startle her so that her concentration won't break. Wait. She doesn't even turn to check who it is. I'll wait. Fifteen minutes later, I decide that her concentration is indeed unbroken, and also that I have waited long enough to warrant poking her gently on the shoulder to remind her of my presence. Ren turns her head mechanically to my direction, ending up staring at my crotch level. Oh, it's a sow. She can tell? I would feel a lot less comfortable if she would look at my face. An astute observation. Hard at work, I see. The conversation starts as if I hadn't been here for a quarter of an hour already, but it's not a concern. At least it starts. Looking good. It does. The layers of paint hiding other layers of paint, mixing and shaping the human figures, really creates an impressive look. But Ren looks miffed. You shouldn't comment on works in progress. Seven years of bad luck. Sounds terrible. Guess I'll take it back then. Still, it looks good. I wonder if I, if I get 14 years of bad luck for thinking that. Ren turns back to look at her painting and pokes it with a big toe. Would you mix some of this color? I'm running out of it. She looks down at a half-empty bowl with the remains of the same pinkish paint in it. I didn't really intend to stay and help her with this project, though. At least I didn't intend to do anything much. I look at Ren, she, empty, she looks emptily back at me. Just this once. Ren picks up another brush and drenches it in another tone of pale red. There are dozens of similar bowls all around the working area. From the looks of this scene, she could have been sitting there for hours. I wonder if she has. That would mean she'd have been skipping school, though, which I, of course, wouldn't put beyond someone like Ren. I pour a little white and red in the bowl, trying to match the color with the one already on the wall. I can't seem to get it right. It's really inconvenient for her not to mix to not mix enough in the first place. Getting it to be the exact same tone will be impossible, but at least I can try to get as close as I can. Speaking of hard work, isn't that a huge work workload for you too? It's such a big painting and all. Oh, I'm not old and bitter enough yet to think like that. I, I she does not have a solid voice. She does not. It is. That is a definite. She does not have a solid voice. Nothing I can think of will satisfy me for the voice of hers. Because I'll end up coming up with something good and forgetting it. Like I have done. So, of course, monotone just that works the best, but I also don't like it. I guess you aren't. You guessed right. Legs hurt, though. I feel like slugs. Slug, slugs made of sea slugs. Because of the position? Yeah. I like doing it in horizontal position more, if you know what I'm talking about. It can't be helped. I can't ask the wall to lay down. Saying that, she stretches herself a little, bending her legs and back far more than a human should flex. It's astonishing how effortlessly she manages her body around. There's a small flinch in her otherwise blank expression, a hint of pain, maybe, as she stretches out her calves. Rin must have stamina and dexterity far above a, human, a normal person to be able to live like she does. She's, work she's wearing out working like this. Why push yourself so much? Take a break or something at least. Continue pushing. Eyes work properly. See the words that are actually there, not invent them. Read what's actually there. Continue tomorrow if it's bad. This gives her a pause. A long one too, feeling like a mental yawn. I don't think so, Sal. I'm not pushing myself. Looks like you are. No, it's not about pushing and pulling or anything related to that kind of thing. There's this boy. A boy? Yes. Where? At the art club. Uh, and? He's blind. Oh, how can you paint if you're blind? No idea. So why is he there? That's the point. He is there. I really should speak more than one word at a time to make this feel more like a discussion, less like an interrogation. You can't really do anything that you call 
it, right? But he comes there anyway. It faints. Why? I don't know. Why? I don't know. That's why I asked. So? It isn't paint off, but I think his paintings are very interesting. I'm sure they are. I once tried that painting with eyes closed. It wasn't too interesting. Flynn and the floor took ages. Couldn't try again. He's becoming better at sculpting. I see. Maybe she was trying to make a point with this. Maybe she forgot she had one. Seems like the art cub is art art cub. The art cub is full of interesting people. Not really. Pretty blunt statement. She totally missed the sarcasm. No? Just like I said, they're not very interesting. I usually don't have much interest in people who are not interesting. Maybe you have. Maybe. But that boy is interesting. Maybe I am like that boy. Or maybe you are. Maybe everyone is. Doing things you can't do just because you can. That's pretty deep, I think. I tell that to her. You're a deep one. I'm a, really, I'm a really shallow and thoughtless person. People say that to me all the time. Did you know I can only think of four things at the same time? No, but now I do. Right now I'm thinking of the second floor girl's toilet, ice cream flavored ice cream, the middle toe, and a haircut. I'm going to need a haircut. She shakes her head around vigorously, letting her short and messy hair ruffle wildly around. I can see that doing this is something she likes to do. We fall silent as Ren treads about around absent-mindedly, poking some brushes around. The thought about the art club sticks in my head for a while longer. I'm feeling like I'm treading on very unknown territory with art. The way these meetings with Ren go, it's as, a, it's, as if, it's as though I'm starting a smoking habit or something. I probably should stop talking with her. It's not like I dislike her, despite the confusion, be, confusion her being herself causes, and I don't dislike her art either. I've even drawn for fun sometimes. I just don't have a real creative drive or any technical skill. So usually if I were to draw something, I'd get bite paper syndrome and just freeze completely. That or I managed to draw something disfigured and probably get frustrated at my in inability to put the picture in my head down on paper. Then call it quits without really even trying to make an effort. I'm basically the same way. I have a good image in my mind, and I don't I don't know why, but I cannot put mental image to paper. I cannot do it. I have no idea why. So, more often than not, I write. But I'm also not a very good writer. So, I'm, I'm just fucked to begin with. Not good artist, not good writer. But sometimes my writing is decent. I even took a writing class. Didn't really help much. Surprisingly enough. Didn't really help much. Anyway. Lynn clearly doesn't have this problem, but she frustrates me in another way. Being with her is like looking into a mirror that doesn't reflect anything like a wall. It makes one question the sanity of the act. Rin sits down in a box, swaying from side to side, apparently comfortable with the uncomfortable silence. She's staring at me again, or maybe over my shoulder. I can't quite figure out where her eyes are focused on. I'm thinking of leaving so she can carry on working on distracts, and I can... Let me try that again. I'm thinking of leaving so she can carry on working undistracted, and then I can do whatever I'm going to do alone. It's not like I have anything that must be done today. Oh shoot. Who? Oh. Nobody, I just forgot to tell Hanukkah that Lily was looking for her. Do you know her? From my class? Oh, her mystery toilet girl. That person is funny. I saw her going to the toilet five times during one recess three weeks ago. I'm sure it's the world record. It was very mysterious. That's why you call her the mystery toilet girl? What other reason could the boss be? Well, if there is, it's an eternal mystery. I didn't follow her in there. Maybe it was late before that. Could have been. Looking at her makes me hungry. Don't say that. That's a bacon joke. It has to be. It has to be a bacon joke. At least, not around her. Ren turns and looks at me blankly, as if she's not sure why I approved her. But she doesn't acknowledge understanding anyone before, so I give up at this point. So do you want to go eat dinner, then? No, not yet. Rita's turned her hungry gaze back to the wall, looking slightly more energetic, or at least slightly less lethargic than she did before. It's as if the wall is an opponent she has to vanquish, something she must overcome before she can indulge in dinner. This is the feeling I get. A weird sense of empathy overcomes me and makes me smile a little to myself. 
Well, her oddity. Rin is pretty cool after all. I'll be going anyway. Have fun. Rin's already grasped a brush and is dipping into fresh paint, so of course she can't hear me anymore. It doesn't answer anything, even if she does. How is it that my favorite character in the novel, and I cannot come up with a voice that I can agree that is good? I don't know what it is. Adhering to the nurse's nagging voice in the back of my head, I cert, I set, I cert, I cert, I set my alarm clock to wake me up early enough to go jogging again. I made a promise, and I'm going to keep it. Besides, Emmy's bound to rat on me if I didn't don't show up. But it's not all that bad. Why can't I read? Oh, I had the highest reading level back in elementary school. Now it's like I have dyslexia or something. But not where I mess up the order of words, where I just invent them and put them in wherever. It's amazing. My morning alarm goes off, and I flow about uselessly for a while until I remember that I decided to give morning runs another shot. I don't know if this was my greatest idea, but I'm determined to keep going. This is about my health, after all. Sure, things haven't been great lately for me, but that hasn't made existence so intolerable that I'm going to try everything I can to stay healthy. That I'm not going to try everything I can to stay healthy. Besides, it's all about asserting some kind of control over this thing, right? If I can manage that, well, I can manage anything. At least that's what I keep telling myself. Once again, it would appear that I'm not alone in my run. Emmy has apparently been here for some time. Looks like she's already worked up a good sweat. Just, when the hell does she come down here anyway? Oh, it's you! Surprised to see you again! Why is that? Well, not many people actually come back for a second try. She frowns, seemingly annoyed by a passing thought. Like the rest of the track team, for instance. Still, it was only supposed to be on a volunteer basis, so it's not that big of a shock. But I guess it's pretty early in the morning. A shrug and suddenly appears that she's forgotten what she was talking about. The front disappears entirely and she seems to snap back to her previous train of thought. So, come on then. What? You're here to run again, right? Well, yes. So come on! I find myself suddenly grabbed and yanked onto the track. Things seem to be set on mirroring yesterday's run. That is, I seem to be struggling while Emmy moves off with an effortlessness that I find enviable. It's incredibly bothersome to be so easily worn out. I know I should be patient and work with things gradually, but it's difficult to stay positive about this. We run the track and start on our second lap. Emmy seems to have grown impatient to keep pace with me and begins to fall away. This is where I gave out yesterday. Will I be able to do more? Well, considering we're not going for Emmy, no, I'm going to take it easy. I let Nemi go with her own pace, and she doesn't show mercy pulling half a lap ahead of me in an instant. I don't blame her. I mean, it's not as if I'm really putting up any sort of a fight out here, is it? Instead, I'm just running at a steady pace, which is what I should be doing, right? There's no need to go pushing my limits at this stage of the game. God, is this even worth it? As we finish the second lap, I break off again. Emmy keeps going, and it almost seems to me that she's disappointed. Well, that's stupid. I don't have anything to prove to her. Come to think of it, I've got nothing to prove to myself, either. I'm just fine the way I am. And what I'm not is a runner. This was probably a bad idea. Maybe there's something else I can do instead of this. Getting up this early sucks anyway. There's gotta be some other way to keep healthy. Walking, maybe. Nice afternoon walks. Yeah, that sounds good. Running isn't for me. I whiffed Emmy and head back to my room. I'll think of something else later. So, of course, picking go for it, pretty much you, you're going, you're getting Emmy. That's kind of how that works. I don't I don't know if that's 100% you will get Emmy, but had I picked that, odds are that I would not get Ren and I would get, instead go to Emmy. And I definitely don't want that. Back in my room, the first thing I see is the familiar row of medication bottles lined up on top of my dresser, and it makes me depressed, as usual. It's annoying. I thought I was okay. I thought I'd made peace with this thing, gotten over it. What I really did, I allowed myself to forget that I have a problem. Being here really reminds me of the reality, and trying to fight against it just hurts. Reflecting on it is only going to do so much. I've done this before, for months. It seems like it's time to get over with it. 
If I allow myself to forget that my life is definitely not going to be as long as those of others, I won't go anywhere. My life may be different from others, but it's life in progress. That is how I'll rationalize it. I down the usual handful of pills, trying to push the sudden dreary feeling out of my head. Then I prepare to head out to class, early, as usual. As I step into the hallway, I notice Kenji coming around the hallway corner, stealthily making his way over to his own room with a large bag. As he sneaks past me soundlessly like a ninja hiding in plain sight, I call out to him. Hey. He jumps at the sound of my voice. Oh, hey, man. Didn't notice you there. I'm really tired. I think it's more like he didn't see me, but that's not the issue. Where have you been this early? Shopping? Nah, I wasn't shopping. Sometimes I have to visit the math teacher. Yeah, I figured it would be a good idea to find out when the next exam is, since she tells you in advance if you want. So then, what's in the bag? I thought I'd go shopping while I was outside. I need supplies to continue this fight against the vast feminist conspiracy. Uh, okay. I thought you didn't go outside. I wear a hat now. I decide to point out that he's not wearing a hat. An awkward silence settles between us, and then Kenji breaks it by pushing his door open slowly, releasing a creaking sound in the air that only makes the moment seem more awkward. He sets the bag down inside his room and clo then closes the door. I'm surprised you went out of your way to find a test date, trying to take advantage of an opportunity to study is pretty diligent. I never study. Neither do I. Oh. I just wanted to know when the next test day was. I'm still gonna take it, duh. I need to know what day I, I can't afford to skip class. He usually sends out updates on that crap by phone, so I had to step out and check up on it. And why do you have to go out when you get it on your phone? I don't carry a phone. What do you mean, don't carry a phone? You mean you just leave it at home? Nah, I don't use phones. I don't have a phone. Phones. I have no phone. Why don't you have a phone? How can you not have a phone? No phone at all? No phone? I just don't like phone. Actually, I'm kind of scared of it. I don't know why. I think it's comes some kind of repressed trauma. But basically, when I hear a phone, I get nervous. It's my darkest secret. I have two theories on it. Either I have some fear of receiving some undefined, ominous, life-altering doom call I was beaten with a phone in the past. Beaten so badly I can't remember it beaten in the head. Well, where else would I get beaten with a phone that would make me unable to remember it? The ass? Unexpectedly logical. I feel very depressed now. So, sensing this conversation is more or less over, Kenji opens his door again and prepares to head inside. Yeah, I'm gonna sleep, dude. Have a good one. Class is going to start in like 20 minutes. I already did something today. I'm too tired to go to school. Hey, you need some lip balm? I accidentally bought two because I thought the store start started selling individual AA batteries. Thanks, but no thanks. Whatever, man. Fucking Kenji. He swiftly enters his lair, finally letting me go to the class. For a change, I'm not the fir I'm, not, I'm not among the first ones to come to morning class. Instead, almost everyone seems to have be here already. I recognize most of my class by their faces now, though the names escape me still. Where me, I think it's kind of the exact opposite. At some point, relatively. I guess soon into the year, I learn everybody's names, and like nobody knows my name. It's funny, but kind of depressing at the same time. But we'll go with funny, because that's better. Class goes on lazily. It's like I'm starting to get into the rhythm of the school. I've even stopped worrying about taking notes and being overly attentive. The first days, I was pretty high strung in class. Muto finishes his lecture about le electricity early, but continues without a pause about the festival. So, as you know, the festival's on the day after tomorrow. The movie? I hope everyone's projects are going to be successful this year. Have a good time, but also come Sunday. Please keep the meaning of the f this festival in your minds. Games and fried food! Everyone bursts out in laughter, and so do I. Yes, thank you, Mikado. What I meant was more that the remainder of his sentence is buried beneath the ring of the lunch bells, and that everyone starts packing their things. Uto deliberates for a moment, but since every, almost nobody seems to pay attention anymore, he gives up and sits down. It's crowded in the hallway, or as crowded in, as hallways in this school probably get. Most of the students seem to be heading down for the cafeteria. It's out! I'm gonna make you a one-time-only super extra special lunch, off, lunch offer. Emmy's homemade lunchbox and the privilege of enjoying them in private with two bombshell beauties. Her overly flirtatious sales pitch echoes in the hallway, a remarkable feat since it's full of people. Amy strikes a very confident-looking pose as an attempt to one-up her own ridiculousness, puffing out her very modest chest and making the V for victory sign with her hand. It sounds delicious. To what I, to what do I owe this honor of being invited? You stood there looking really lost and sad, so I thought you could use some company. 
That is probably the most depressing reason imaginable. Yeah, we'll just assume that I didn't mess that up, even though I know I did. So how about it? You're probably really lonely when we'd eat that awful cafeteria food all alone otherwise. Eh... I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Sure, I'll have your lunch offer. With pleasure. Let's go to the roof. Roof? Why the roof? Because that's where we eat lunch. And if I don't get up there, then she'll probably wander off and I just don't know. Then I just know she'll go hungry because she never packs a lunch for herself. Who will? Come with me. Without answering my question or waiting for a response, she grabs me by the arm and drags me through the hallways. I attempt to make conversation in the way. Why do you have an extra lunch? Amy smiles guiltily. Actually, it's yesterday's lunch. I slept in a run at lunch and forgot to eat it. Huh. And we're gonna end it off on the staircase. Oh boy. So, yeah, that's the end of this episode, I suppose. I'm reckoning. If you were the viewer, give me a like or favorite. If you like this video, leave me a comment telling me if you liked the video, didn't like the video, you know, anything you want to say down there. You know, the usual. And, um, until next time. We're going to go with keep on painting, because that's what it used to be last time, and I can't think of anything better, because I'm not creative. <laughs>